watching the nation's best college newscast. 11 News at Noon starts now. Cave closed. Timpanogos Cave has closed two weeks early, and the federal budget is to blame. Airplane accommodations. Some Provo flights didn't leave the tarmac over the weekend, grounding travelers in the name of safety. And mind the gap, how educators are trying to conquer language barriers for ESL students in Utah. I'm Mark Chalice. And I'm Randall Vaudry. Welcome to 11 News at Noon. No need to wait out the looming government shutdown for the Rangers at Timpanogos Cave. No, they're out of money already, so the cave is done for the year. Blame the sequester. One of Utah's treasured trails closed two weeks earlier than normal. 11 News reporter Jessica Black hiked a mile and a half to bring us the story. Timpanogos Cave sold out all weekend, and Rangers say it would have this next weekend, too, if they had the budget to stay open. Budget cuts have caused Timpanogos Cave National Monument to close early. Almost 2,000 hikers went to the top of the mountain this weekend. They are the last visitors to see the cave this year. We have these beautiful national parks and people want to be able to enjoy them as many months as possible. So I would hate to see uh, any reduction in the hours. Belts tightening in Washington is to blame the famous sequester. Since then, organizers have struggled all year to try and make the most out of their funding. Rangers say they took a 5% reduction in their budget, and that means cuts all across the board. We reduced all, cut out all unnecessary travel, we cut our supplies budget, but really the bulk of our budget goes into our personal services. The Timpanogos team would have stayed open over UEA weekend, but they couldn't afford it, even after spreading the work among fewer employees and reducing programs. We've had fewer school groups who were able to come up and take advantage of going on the field trips. Timpanogos Cave won't open again until next May. Until then, rangers will prepare the trails for winter and repair damage from recent rainstorms. Timpanogos administrators say they hope they'll have more money to work with next year, and if not, they will continue to make cuts where necessary. Randall? Thanks, Jessica. A man wearing nothing but underwear and one sock called out for help after being stranded Saturday night above Spanish Fork Reservoir. People living nearby heard his cries and called the sheriff. Search and rescue crews carried him down on a stretcher Sunday. Deputies found drug paraphernalia with the man, and deputies say the 39-year-old admitted to using heroin during his hike. Air passengers in Provo had to change their travel plans last weekend. And as 11 News reporter Fong Pham tells us, Allegiant Air grounded its flight from Provo to the San Francisco Bay Area. It was because of inspection problems. The partnership between Provo Airport and Allegiant Air has brought about a non-stop flight to Oakland. But a compliance issue with Allegiant's plane delayed its Friday flights by a day. An Allegiant spokesman says its MD-80 aircrafts emergency slides require inspection before returning to operation. We say that there's nothing more important and I think what you're witnessing here is evidence of that, that we put that above everything else. The flight cancellations led to many people having to change their personal plans. It's very unfortunate because I had business to take care of yesterday and today and this morning, so I had to cancel my business appointments and reschedule them. The airline's customer service line also got overloaded as a result of the changes. Couldn't call, got hung up on twice, called corporate and they hung up on my daughter. To make up for the inconvenience, Allegiant Air compensated each one of their customers, hoping to keep them flying with the airline in the future. Travel vouchers serve as part of the compensation, and they will help the company retain its passengers for at least another flight. I'll give them another shot, absolutely. Things come up, that was, as I understand it, it was beyond their control. At the Provo Airport, Fong Fam, 11 News. Allegiant says we'll continue expecting its MD-80s until the end of September. The company advises passengers sign up for the flight alerts so that they can follow on any flight changes that will come up. The FBI says violent crime has risen in Utah by 4% in the last year. But the state still has one of the lowest crime rates in the country, so that's the good news. We're sixth lowest in the country behind Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Virginia, and Wyoming. Salt Lake Police say that strong communities are what keep crime rates low. Community in Provo made history this weekend with its first gay pride festival. 11 News reporter Roger Sanchez ch tells us 
why supporters think it will create a safer environment for gays and lesbians living in Utah County. Family, friends, and hundreds more gather at Provost Memorial Park in support of gay pride. We hope to uh, accomplish a greater understanding between the LGBT, uh, L LGBTQ community in Utah County. Openly gay BYU student James Price says he fully supports gay pride. So it's really nice to see a community event that is all about celebrating the diversity that we have with it. Kendall Wilcox thinks the festival helps make Provo a safer place for the gay and lesbian community. In the last few years, the sh situation has shifted enough that younger and younger people feel comfortable in coming out. Some in the crowd say they came to support family members, but while they love the individuals, they don't agree with their lifestyle. You cannot further God's plan, at least the way that I view it, without procreating powers of a man and a woman. And you obviously can't do that with two men. For many people here, they see the festival as a step forward for the LGBT community. One older gentleman even compared it to the Salt Lake's first festival back in June of 1977 with hopes that it keeps on growing more and more each year. Affirmation and Mormons Building Bridges say they came to the festival to help LDS members who have same gender attraction and say the festival was a good way to help the Provo LGBT community. In Provo, Roger Sanchez, 11 News. Now, Provo Pride said they were overjoyed with the turnout of the festival and they're already working on plans for next year. Still to come on your 11 News at noon, Kenya Mall attack. The deadliest shooting left more than 60 people dead and dozens as hostages. How the Kenyan government is handling the crisis. And stop and go. A new study of traffic lights wants to reduce car crashes and the key may be the yellow light. We'll explain when we return. Recent numbers show minority students are struggling to keep up with national academic averages. 11 News reporter Shalise Kofed spoke with those who are trying to fix this problem here in Utah. Sandra Pina is a working mother from Argentina. Her first two sons struggled with school here in Provo because they were adapting to a new culture and language. She says the system has improved over the past few years and her youngest son is not only succeeding, but surpassing his classmates. When we came to USA, the little one, he had to go to the fourth grade. In two months, he was on the sixth grade. But many minority students are still struggling to keep up. The National Center for Education Statistics reports Caucasian students are learning at a much faster pace than their minority classmates. Utah's Interim Education Committee is thinking up ways to close the learning gap. At schools like this one, administrators, teachers, and counselors work hard to close the education gap. But many agree these efforts see the most success when parents get involved. Pay attention to, to what your kids are doing. Log on, see if they're homework is current, you know, a answer your mail and your phone. Sandra has found this advice to be effective in her own parenting and would even recommend taking it a step further. They need to go to the school. If you feel that something is wrong at the school, you need to talk with them. Parents are encouraged to stay in touch through phone, email, and visits with teachers. In Provo, Shalise Kofed, 11 News. Counselors say they want to increase teacher trainings to help minority students catch up to their peers. They want legislators to increase funding to make that happen. Terrorists take hostages in Kenya, world leaders gather for UN General Assembly, and devastation in China as Typhoon Usagi makes landfall. Here's your look at news from around the world. Shots rang out and people took cover as the siege and hostage situation at a Kenyan mall goes into its third day. A Somalian terrorist group is claiming responsibility for the attack that's killed at least 69 people and injured nearly 180. The FBI is investigating reports that three of the alleged attackers are American citizens. New York City is hosting nearly 200 leaders from around the world as the UN as the annual UN General Assembly gets underway. The Council is expected, expecting tension when they discuss problems in Syria and Iran. When American diplomats meet with their Latin counterparts, many are expecting it to be awkward because of reports saying Washington has been spying on its allies. And at least 25 people are dead in southern China after Typhoon Usagi hit land with 115 mile per hour winds. The heavy rains and powerful gusts left behind damaged buildings, fallen trees, and flooded streets. 
Officials say that this is one of the most powerful storms to hit the region this year. And that's your look at news from around the world. Mark? All right, so we all know red means stop, green means go, but a yellow light doesn't always make late people wait. I know it doesn't me. UDOT is testing new traffic light technology that adjusts when it switches from green to, from green to red. It's based on traffic. Radar lets the system know when cars approach the intersection and adjusts the green light as needed, and then it works that way. Provo, the Provo-based company Wavetronics made the system. We can kind of reduce the amount of things that can go wrong. And, and one of those is to keep the light green when you're about two and a half to five and a half seconds from the light. The Utah Department of Public Safety required 50,000 car wrecks at intersections in 2012. Wavetronics says the goal is to cut the number of accidents in half. Well, speaking of cars, it's a great week to go driving up the canyon and see the color change in the leaves. It is. Absolutely. It is beautiful outside, and the leaves are changing, and fall's already begun. We'll be back with more 11 weather when we return. Happy fall, everyone. Yesterday marked the first day of fall, and today in Provo, it's starting to look, it, the leaves aren't exactly changing colors yet, but it's starting to feel like fall with the nice, beautiful blue sky and with the sun shining down, and pretty soon the leaves will start changing colors. And if we go to right now in, right now in Provo, it is about 59 degrees with a humidity of 48, which is pretty good for this time of year. And the wind speed is about five, so it's not too breezy, but it's just enough to keep you a little bit cool and to start really feeling like fall. And, and later tonight, it's the weather's gonna go down a little bit farther as we cool down to about 48 degrees. And with mostly clear skies, the sun will go down at about 721 tonight. So just, so just get out and enjoy the sunlight while you can because the days are just gonna keep getting shorter and shorter as the month goes on. And then throughout the rest of Utah, it's a Today in Utah, it's actually very sunny throughout the state, and it's also and the rest of Utah is starting to feel like fall, as well with a, with with the lowest temperature being in Vernal, which is about 67 degrees. And let's see, the weather should in pretty much like throughout the state, it's mostly just in the 60s and the 70s, with the exception of St. George being about 83 degrees today. But that's normal for St. George being down there in the south. And as far as southern Utah goes, we should expect the weather to be a pretty much this whole week throughout be in the 80s this weekend and with the, with the weather going down to about the, with the 50s later tonight. Oh, and here's, here's a map of where, wherever you are. Yeah, wherever you are in, in Utah today that, you know, find your weather wherever, whatever city you're living in. Right now and today in Provo, the high will be about 70 degrees and then that's as far as it'll be throughout the rest of the states. And, as, and like I said, Southern Utah expects some nice 80 degree weather and then it'll cool down to about the 50s later in the night. And then Wednesday expects a little bit of wind in St. George and then Thursday, you should also expect a slight chance of rain. And same goes for Northern Utah. And in fact, Northern Utah should expect some rain a little bit earlier this week, starting on, starting on Wednesday and then Tuesday, we should expect the high on Tuesday in Northern Utah will be about 80 degrees. However, you should also expect it However, you should also expect some winds, and then on Thursday, and then starting on Wednesday throughout the rest of the week, should, you should expect some nice rainstorms, and it'll be pretty rainy this week, and a little rainy and cold for the weekend. What so do you guys think? it really is fall, huh? It really is fall. I was expecting a little bit more rain, or a little bit less rain, but it's crazy. You know, I heard okay. the the leaves are changing colors up at Mount Timonogos. So yeah. I think I'm going to go hike it this weekend. It's a beautiful hike. It's gorgeous. Thanks, Kathleen. Dave, those Cougars broke my heart this weekend. It's terrible. Yeah, it was a pretty rough game out there. Yeah, they broke your heart, and they also broke the hearts of everyone in Cougar Nation. We'll talk about the rivalry game. We'll have highlights and reaction from Saturday night. I'm not sure I want to do it, but I'm pretty sure I have to do it. I'm talking, of course, about recapping Saturday night's rivalry game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU has lost three straight to the Utes. Kyle Van Noy and the good guys trying to change that. But it was all Utah early on. The Utes with the touchdown here, they had a 13-0 lead at halftime. 
BYU would respond though with five minutes left in the game. Michael Elisa plows through the end zone to make it a seven point game. Not surprisingly, it would come down to the final play of the night with no time left and down by seven. Taysom Hill's final throw falls incomplete, no pass interference on the call, and that's the way BYU loses the Holy War. Bronco, talk to me. I think it was a typical BYU-Utah game. I think both sides competed very hard, and ultimately Utah, I think, made one more play, um, if you look at the collective. Um, and they're to be given credit for that, and so I congratulate them. A scary moment in the third quarter of the game saw BYU's Jamal Williams taken off the field in a stretcher. Williams spent Saturday night in the hospital but was released yesterday afternoon. BYU called the injury a concussion and a severe stinger. His current status is listed as day to day, which is certainly good news for everybody involved. Let's go to the field house for some volleyball. Fans ready, coach ready for the number two team in the nation, San Diego at BYU. Also ready, Alexa Gray, number nine in white with the hustle play. She's from Canada. My mom's from Canada, so I'm half Canadian, and I have to like Alexa Gray. I also have to like her because she makes plays like this. Cougars sniffing the upset against San Diego. Match point. Who else? Alexa Gray delivers the knockout blow against the number two team in all the land. Well, we always thought we were going to win. Our coaches put together a great uh, game plan for us, so we just tried to stick to that, and if we did that, we knew that we'd come out with a win. Parent versus child, old versus new. The BYU swim team challenged former team members in Friday's alumni meet. 11 News reporter Kylie Patton tells us which generation won the battle. Sink or swim, BYU swim alumni took on the current swim teams to show that age is just a number. 2011 swim alum Daniel Bates took on his brother Samuel early on in the evening for a friendly sibling rivalry. I was behind my younger brother, both in all my individuals, <laughs> and we won the relay because we cheated. But uh, yeah, that's okay. Alumni can do that. Even with Bates' playful attempt, the current Cougars smashed the alumni in this year's meet. Even though they lost, Bates says he enjoys coming back to spend time with the team. The dynamics of the team is, have uh, not really changed. The culture's still there. They're still got a hunger to win and attitude. This alumni meet where the scores don't count allows them to see where they're at and what they need to work on for the upcoming season. Yolanda Bates is more than just a sibling's mother. She's also the BYU swim coach. She says she looks forward to this each year and hopes the athletes will follow the alumni examples and continue swimming after graduation. Hopefully they'll get back to BYU, back to swimming, that they come back and do alumni meets. The alumni meet usually draws a few dozen former athletes. And although this year attracted fewer, Coach Bates says she is happy she got to compete with her children and is proud of everyone's performance. On BYU campus, Kylie Patton, 11 News. Their next meet won't be against alums, it'll be against each other. The annual blue and white meet starts at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning at the Richards Building Pool. Right to the diamond, Kansas City Royals the hosting the Texas Rangers. Rangers. Both teams still looking for a playoff spot. Third inning, James Shields with the K. Bottom of the 10th now, no score. Bases loaded. Boom, shock, Alaka. It's what every kid dreams of doing, and it's what Justin Maxwell just did. A game-ending grand slam in the Royals' walk-off with their playoffs hopes still alive. And finally, how about some golf for you? Keegan Bradley's second shot on a par four for Eagle. Wait for it, high in the sky, keep waiting for it. Get in the hole. An Eagle for Keegan Bradley, that is how you do it. So guys, next time the three of us are golfing, which one of you will do that? No, it's definitely not gonna be me. I've only golfed like twice in my entire life. Yeah, don't look at me. Uh, tennis is my country club sport as far as I go. So Okay, so then I guess by default, it'll be me. I'll it'll be. have to be. It's going to be you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Still to come on 11 News at Noon. Crash and splash. Daredevils get a taste of adventure in this man-made aircraft. We'll be right back. Crowds gathered to watch flying daredevils soar or plummet in the Red Bull's first national flug tog competition. Thousands showed up with their homemade flying devices, all willing to jump off a 30-foot platform and glide, or in this case, crash into the water below. Teams could have up to five people, one pilot and four to help with takeoff. 
Judges watched for distance, creativity, and showmanship. Prizes for these brave souls included team skydiving excursions and tickets to various sporting and music events. I don't know about you guys, but I can do that. I was just going to say, let's do it. Yeah. Let's go on September 23rd. You can join